Hey guys, welcome back. Look, I'm gonna do something completely new with this channel, so bear with me here. Number one, I'm gonna be giving you a telephone number. I'm gonna give you a telephone number. If you're hurting, you're struggling, you're having a hard time, you or your loved ones, someone, family, friend, you name it, hit me up, shoot me a text on Pacific Time or call. I've got a lot of platforms. I want you guys to start reaching out and plug to me, okay? I've got Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the Discord. If you wanna join my recovery community and be part of what I have there, join the Discord and I have my email. All of that's in the description of this video. And here we go, we're gonna get into this video. I'm gonna tell you guys how I almost died. I couldn't breathe doing Opanas. I'm gonna tell you what happened and go into the story. Guys, I, I wanna tell you the problem. I wanna focus on the problem. I wanna talk about the drug. I wanna talk about how much of the drug. I wanna get into that. So if you're gonna be triggered by stuff like that, you may not wanna watch this. I was, uh, I was going from painkillers, doing regular Percocets as usual, and doing an Oxycontin when I could get my hands on it, to needing more Percocets, called this lady, she said come get some, I came over, she checks her script, and all of a sudden she only has two, which ain't enough for me. Um, I end up getting told by her, why don't you try the uh, these right here, these are Opanas, they're red stop signs. You should get you know, get these, uh, I'll sell them to you $5 a piece, and I'm like, dude, I don't want those, I want the Percocets, those, I have never even heard of those, they're probably no good, and uh, when I say good, you guys know what I mean, active users and those who have been there know, good is simply saying that they're strong, they're good, they're gonna get the job done, they'll get me high, I will feel, I will feel like I'm messed up from them. And uh, that's what you're looking for. <laughs> so she she sells me a couple, and I'm like, whatever. I swallow it, and I'm so not ha happy with it. I was not satisfied. This is a 30 milligram stop sign red opana, oxymorphone. Oxymorphone is like oxycodone with morphine. It's it's like a morphine oxycodone mix. It's the strongest painkiller that I have ever taken myself. Never took anything stronger. I've had 80 milligram Oxycontins. Nothing's been stronger than the Oxymorphone when it came to painkillers. And I felt like I overdosed one time doing them. There were the white moon symbol on it and it was a 15 milligram. It was an instant release. And I remember tooting the whole thing after I hadn't used in a while. I was sick for three days. I've never been sick for three days. I was the guy that would sniff it and if it made me throw up, I was happy, I knew I was good. But I remember I was heading from Fayetteville, North Carolina, went and picked up two of them. I did half a one or a whole one, and in the bathroom at my work, I was stopped in just saying, hey, hey, I gotta use the restroom real quick, what's up everybody? Did it in the bathroom at my work, went out to the car, and on the way to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, I was my wife was sitting there, she's just, like, just her petting my head was like, I just felt like good, but I was nodding. I was out of this world and I was throwing up and I felt like, man, I did too much. It wasn't it wasn't right. I was beyond the feeling I wanted to feel. Look, I was long past the Percocet feeling. I didn't, it used to give me energy. It used to be like, I'd get high, itchy nose, okay, itchy head, itchy head, let me do my thing, I'm happy, and then a crash, okay? I was well past that. I didn't care about the energy part of it. I really did it and was able to go to La La Land and nod. I just, ugh. That was it. That was what I was aiming at. That goal of hitting that where I am at home. I call it at home because it's like the, the place where I say God comes down and gives you a hug and makes you feel like everything's going to be all right. That's what I said early on. And I mentioned this in my day five video, how these oxymorphones, these opanas, these were $5 a piece. They're nothing like that. Like, I took advantage of it when I knew she was selling them to me that cheap and she didn't know what they were worth yet. So I went and bought like 40 of them. And I stayed in my living room at my house and I put black curtain or black sheets over the, the, the windows and I laid in there like it was like a cave and I played Final Fantasy and would nod all day. I put a dip in my lip, like tobacco, you know, that you dip with. I put it in my lip and I'd lay there and I'd nod and I'd, and I'd finally wake up. Half the dip was swallowed and then I started creating little holes underneath my gums where my teeth are and started messing my teeth up. So I had to stop because it was creating holes in my gums um, and, and I'd go do more. 
and I'd do more until I ran out. And withdrawing off of that sucked. It was the worst. So I went from licking coating off of these and crushing them till they came out with this new type of oxymorphone. And the new type of oxymorphones, they, they were gel. You couldn't crush them. All you do is, if you crush them, they just squish and, and they were gooey. You know, they weren't, they weren't the same. This guy was like, hey, watch this. Took a piece of paper, folded it up, stuck it on a plate or on a table. I don't know if you guys can see that, but pretty much it's like this on a plate. And he took an animal nail grinder, a Dremel tool that you can grind the dog's nails with. And he took a needle nose pliers and went And he's grinding this pill, using this to protect it so it doesn't fly everywhere. And then he does it to an acetaminophen, Tylenol. So he's mixing the stuff, he's chopping it up and I'm watching him do this magic and I'm like, what the hell? Why are you going out of your way to do all this? And he's like, so that way it doesn't stick to your nose when you, when you ingest it. How we come up with these things, man, we cre we're very creative people to try and figure out a way to do our drugs. Well, I did it. And it takes longer to kick in. It was more of a mellow high because it doesn't hit you as hard as doing a crushable. And the best way I can equate this to any of you guys, if you've never used opioids, and I'm glad that you haven't, if you haven't, um, if you're an addict like me, I can only equate it to, and the closest thing to it is sex. And I say the closest thing because technically um, it, it took me beyond sex in terms of the way, you know, I gave up sex for my drugs. That's how far it went. I mean, the last three months of me running out there in the streets, when I got kicked out of my house after a couple, I'd say about a month toward the end, I was out of my house. But towards the end, like, you don't even... What is that? I don't even want to sleep with my wife. I was just all about me, just doing the drug, and that was my wife. My new wife was the drug. I, that was my queen. It was my love. It was everything that I ever wanted. Anyway, I did a little bit of this here, the gel, and it lasted longer than the crushable. So I was like, oh, this is the way to go. Warning. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm letting you know right now because this gel... I started snorting about a month or two of this, okay? I can't recall because the time is not like I remember that well. And I remember when I, when I had snorted a bunch of this that um, I couldn't breathe through my nose. And I started getting a little bit like claustrophobic, panicky feeling like something's wrong with my breathing. <clears throat> and come to find out, I couldn't blow it out. I couldn't get it out of my nose. And it was blocking, it was starting to block my airway in my, in my throat. So I'm over here, like trying to breathe, panicking and feeling like I'm about to pass out. And on top of that, the drug's intense. So I am wishing I could just feel better and I can't. I'm under the sink, panicking, taking the water, <laughs> trying to breathe the water in through my nose, but I, I can barely get any water in there. And uh, I about passed out and I thought I was going to die. I literally thought this is it. And this is how sick this thing is. The next day, well, mind you, I tried to feel better. I mean, I was for a while, for hours, I wasn't right, and I went and laid down. The next day, I'm sick. I still have this plate over here with some of this stuff on the plate. And I remember I was so sick, though, I needed something, and I didn't have money. I mean, you got to go day to day. You know, I didn't keep money. I didn't have a job. I wasn't, I wasn't right. And I remember... I was so scared of it now, I added more acetaminophen trying to make it safe and did not do as much. I literally just wanted to not be sick. It wasn't about getting high. It was like, let me just not be sick at this moment because it scared me. It really scared me. So I went back to the crushables, even though they cost more money. I was finding money. I was stealing. I was lying. I was doing everything you can imagine. And I said, screw these gels, even though I might have done a few here and there every once in a while. I never stuck to them like I did before. After that experience, I didn't want them. And I went to a different thing, like the Crushables. I remember they were like $80 a pill. The dope dealer tried to tell me, hey, look, it's the same thing, man. You're just paying a lot more money for a pharmaceutical brand of heroin. And I bought his story. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't buy that. Don't buy it. If you've never done heroin, just don't do it. Trust me. 
Trust me, get help while you can, get out while you can, don't go doing the heroin. Because I was a guy who said, I will never shoot up. I am scared of needles, I will never shoot up. That's okay, because I don't shoot up, Derek. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sniff it. That's all, or smoke it. Well, we always say we're never gonna do stuff and we end up doing things we never thought we would have. That's a fact. I'm telling you, that's why I'm an addict. I was looking at the pamphlet in, in the detox center, reading things I never would have done that I did do, and checked off like, yep, I did that. No, I didn't do that. Yep. Went, went to um, get a pill. I split an Opana because I didn't have enough money for a whole one myself with another guy. Half a pill. Didn't even get high. I was so mad. The next day, I decided I'd take that drug dealer up on doing heroin. And he said, I'll give you $35 worth for 20 so I decided I'm going to try it, and I did a, a small little bit because I was so scared, and then that whole stigma of what you're scared of goes away. Oh, it's not that bad. It does feel good. It did the job. The worst thing I could have done was start doing the heroin because next thing you know, I'm sick on that, and you find a way down the road to sit there and put a needle in your arm. I love you guys. I don't want you guys to suffer. And I want you to know that my message is good. It's a recovery. It's about being clean. We have a community of people, other YouTubers who are attached to us that they're in my Discord. They're YouTubers that are about the recovery community that are there. You can start your own. I'll come show you love. Be sure to check out my Discord. I'm on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. The Discord, you can email me. That's down in the description. And my telephone number is 509 866 66 710. And if you're struggling, you're going through it, hit me up, shoot me a text, let me know, and uh, or call me. But I am Pacific time, so I may not pick up calls if you call past a certain time. I have a family. And uh, I want you to know I want to help you out and be there to help support you in any way, shape, or form. That's just it. Thanks for seeing me here at Rewired Addiction. Derek Lambert, don't do opanas and stay away from all that shit. All right, love y'all.